Hello everyone, my name is Peter. Welcome to episode number 499,846. Another video sponsored by Appeals in which I will be drawing in a sketchbook here. And uh, I think it's ready. We're going to be using some of these pens, which you might have noticed from a previous video. We unboxed these pens, but we never got around to using them. Pens from Gravitas Pens. I feel like I said pens like 10 times already in the first, <laughs> and I'm dropping pens already in the first 30 seconds in the video. Basically what happened was in the previous video, we unboxed this really pretty pen, but uh, we also got these three pens, which came in these nice sleeves like so. Very cool. Apparently this is uh, some old Irish type of uh, script called a, Ogum or Oum or something like that. And it says Gravitas pens, very cool. I'll say these pens are very minimalistic. There's not a whole lot going on with them. The only markings on the outside are these uh, little company logos right there. And each end has a very sharp point. It doesn't look that sharp, as you can see here. It's like a, like, I don't know, like what is that, 120 degrees? It's a very obtuse angle but it is machined in such a way that uh, like I could very easily scratch myself with that. It could probably, I don't know, can they scratch each other? I don't even want to really try, but it's sharp. Much sharper on both ends than it might at first appear. It provides a nice tactile feedback, which is something I value in pens because you always have it in your hand anyways, and then you want to fidget and, and, and feel it, you know, so. They all unscrew. The, the lids come off of all of them, miraculously enough. And you can see I've used these already. This one is the 0.5 nib, 1.5. It's the widest one. It's kind of a broad chisel tip, like a calligraphy nib, actually. These ones provide more constant line widths, no matter how you draw with them. Here's a medium nib and an EF. Also, I have to mention this very nice little apple container that I got in a previous video. Like I said, it does very nicely hold two apple slices. Look at that. Hmm. Nourishment. Ow. All right, I'm going to draw with all three of these today just to give you an example of what these lines look like. Let me find a one of my test pages. I have a few test pages scattered around in the sketchbook. Here's one. Here's what the EF nib looks like and how it performs. It's nice and crisp, clean. And now I've put carbon ink, uh, ink in here, platinum carbon ink, black. And now some people don't um, like this as much because it's, it's what you call uh, pigmented ink. And I like it just because it looks so nice and dark and black and consistent, uh, but it's also waterproof. And so some people say it tends to clog their pens up a little more. I personally haven't had any problems with it, but I don't know. Just I'm just putting that out there. I like it, but some people don't. So if you run into problems with it, just know that you're not the first one. All right, so here's the EF pen. Here is the M pen. A little bit broader. And I'm going to do drawings. I'm going to do three drawings using all these pens. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a whole drawing with this chisel tip, the one, 1. 1.5, because it kind of bothers me how, you know, you get different types of lines when dragging the pen different ways. So I'll, what this really is good for me, how I like it, is just nice for blocking in huge sections. If you, need to, if you need to color in areas like this, right? That's very satisfying to me. It's useful for that. So, pretty cool. And if you wanted to do like calligraphy stuff, right? Which I don't really know how to do. Peter. Nice. Now today's video is sponsored by Appeals. And like I mentioned before, we have a really cool art contest going where if you click on the link in the description, you can enter the art contest, submit your art. The theme is Peter's 
otherworldly travel diaries. So that's just kind of a place for you to start a little theme to set you off in a direction. It can be anything on that theme, right? It can be something like weird and wacky and crazy and otherworldly um, based on what you things you have seen or things that nobody has seen. Maybe things that nobody ever will see. It can be with humans or aliens, machines, nature, shapes. And you're allowed to use all sorts of different media. It's very open-ended, okay? Click the link in the description. Check it out to see all the details. First place, and there's two first place prizes. Both get $300 cash. Second place gets $150. And then there's three runners up that all get $50. Bucks, and all those people will get invitations to be entered into the creator program at Appeals. But you can also just... Uh, apply to enter into the creator program at Appeals so you can have your art uploaded there and then other people can buy it and you can monetize your art that way. And you can always just upload your own art there and buy your own stuff for yourself if you just want to have your own art on a sticker. And I've been testing it out, okay? I put a bunch of their stickers on my water bottle here. They're nice stickers made out of fabric. You can just stick it, but you can also remove it just like this. Peel it right off and then reuse it. I want it over here, underneath the wolf eyes. Stick it, remove it, reuse it. Look at that, and it's as good as new. No sticky residue left behind either, which is amazing to me. Usually when I peel off stickers, half of it is left behind, right? There's gotta be a better way. Also, they've got a June promotion going right now, $10 off all phone and water bottle stickers. Use the code SUMMERFUN, all right? Go check it out, appeals.com, link in the description. Enter the competition. Voting starts June 15th, so get your submissions in by then, okay? I'm wearing my charms that Opal has sent me. I have my three pens of power. Let's see what we can get done with this. Here, in our sketchbook of doom. <laughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. And so I commenced with the drawing. A little spoiler alert, I did three drawings here for this video. The first one, I used only the very fine, the EF pen, extra fine, I think is what it stands for. For the second drawing, I did a combination of the EF and the 1.5 pen um, which, uh, it's a little complicated, but I started that pen, that drawing, and then I did the third drawing, and then I finished it, but I edited it together to make it look like it was just all done at the same time. Anyways, and then the third drawing, I just used the, the M nib, which is medium, I guess. Uh, who knows what these letters actually stand for. As far as the pens go, they, they felt good. I don't know that they were kind of, um, advertised to me. I don't know if they're really advertised to me, but the guy who makes these, Ben Walsh, he described them to me as, uh, I don't know, in some way being designed for, d designed as having some level of balance as to facilitate prolonged sessions of drawing and writing. Um, I didn't personally notice some like abnormal or out of the ordinary level of balance and that I was like, wow, this feels so effortless. But, um, I guess maybe like they just felt good. Like I wasn't, I wasn't hampered or held back by imbalance, which is maybe a sign that they were well balanced, but, um, I didn't, I didn't feel like they were, the, the, the pens didn't start drawing for me or anything, right? They don't, Mm. Uh, as much as I regret to say it, they weren't actually imbued with any magic or supernatural powers. Um, maybe, you know, if any of you do know of any pens with enchantments or magical spells put upon them, uh, let me know. But as it turns out, these do just seem like, uh, well, put together, solidly made pens. However, some people on Instagram did send me messages to posts um, advertising, or I don't know if they were just showing off these pens from Japan in which there were reservoirs, 
clear sections in which there were floating roundworms, or I guess the technical name would be like nematodes or something, right? It's a type of intestinal parasite. But the appeal there was that you would have a pen, and then up in the upper section of it was uh, a few like worms in there, and they would wiggle around and move, but they only stay stay alive for a few days, maybe a couple weeks at most, depending, I guess, if you could figure out a way to feed them. Um, it also seems a little risky. Like what? That seems like a bad pen for people who chew on the ends of their pens and other stuff. Uh, also, if it if you dropped and it fell and it broke, and it, like I don't really want to get a, a an intestinal parasite from my pen, and then I also don't want to have a pen that after a few days has dead animals in it. I mean, it's a nice thought of having a pen with dynamic moving elements in it. Like maybe it would be cool if there was a pen with a little heating element and then you could have, oh, I almost don't want to say this idea because it's so cool all of a sudden, but a miniature lava lamp section up in the top of it. Is that even, I wonder if that's doable. I wonder if lava lamps, most lava lamps I've seen are almost all the same size-ish. Uh, like I haven't seen any that are smaller than like a certain size. So maybe maybe the the chemicals or materials they use need to be a certain size for the bubbles to form and move around. Uh, but that, that would be kind of cool if there was a, a lava lamp pen. What other cool things could move around? I mean, I've seen pens with like little little sections with like liquid and um, like glitter flakes and stuff. I've seen those. Even back in school, there were glitter flakes that would move around and that was kind of fun. But something that would move around by itself without you having to like shake it or move it. You could just like see it there. I guess... If you put a lava a lava lamp pen down on its side on your desk, that would up, that would just that would mess up the whole functioning of the pen because lava lamps work by the you know it, they they heat up the stuff on the bottom of the lava lamp. That stuff rises to the top, cools down, and then comes down to the bottom again, and it just keeps on renewing that cycle. So I guess if you put it down on its side, it might mess up. Also, your, I feel like that's one of those things where your pen might randomly explode or something if it mess. It is a little risky. I can see the risks involved, but I'm still intrigued, interested, and I want one. Also, I mean, I, got, I feel like it's two videos in a row now where I've talked about weird, totally extraneous features that I want in pens. But of course, I still do want pens that just work. Okay, here... Also, totally unrelated, I have uh, on my phone, sometimes I would wake up and I would use my the voice memos feature on my phone to record my dreams, what I just remembered, right? And then I would listen to it later. But some, because usually what happens if, is I wake up and I remember my dream for about 10 seconds about, upon waking up. And so I need to like write it down right away or say it right away. Uh, but the problem is sometimes I even forget that I had that dream and that I, re that I re recorded it. So, I mean, this is a dream from at the, the beginning of the year. I was looking at my, through my voice memos and I didn't even remember that I made this recording. It was very weird to find this on my phone. It was like someone else with my voice made this recording. I'll let you listen to it right now. I'm just going to play it off my phone and hold it next to the camera. You'll hear my, this is my groggy voice, okay. A study about a plant that has seven leaves and then six leaves and then seven leaves again. So they assume that it really did have seven leaves the whole time and they just miscounted. So they go back and look at the photograph they took as evidence and the flash was on by accident obscuring the photo. So for some reason, the plant had been heisted for one day to maybe clone it or take some sort of extract. Huh. I don't know what I was talking about there. Here's another quick one from 
back from 2016 that I found on my phone that I'll let you listen to real quick. I was sitting in a room. I got to the Star Wars movie late. Two other guys in the movie were talking about aliens made out of mirrors, kind of cubish. One of the mirrors spelled out one of the guy's names and missed the first letter of the guy's name. And we're making fun of him by living off the letters of the words we're saying. And it was pretty funny. But then my alarm clock rang. All right, there you have it. Um, I don't really know what else to say about those. Just, um, I, I, I mean, I'm curious about what these dreams could mean. I don't, I'm... I'm kind of hesitant to say I believe that dreams can be interpreted. I maybe believe that there are themes that the presence of such themes could have significance to my real life, but I also don't really want there to be some sort of professional dream interpreter in uh, here watching and listening to this. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a little bit personal for someone to have some more... um, piercing and intimate view into my own subconscious than I have, right? T- to know more about me than I do just by listening to my dreams. Me recounting my own dreams seems like a, a new and different kind of, of a glimpse into my subconscious. If, if it truly is, if, if that is, is the case. Does that make any sense? Like, I feel like you should have to get someone's permission before you interpret their dreams, if it is possible to do that accurately. Anyways, hope you're all doing well. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you uh, think. If you have any other cool pens you think I should review or use, even, mm, I might even be willing to use a pencil sometimes, or even a ballpoint pen. Huh, fancy that. Anyways, thanks for watching, like I said, and uh, take care. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen to you. Goodbye.